Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for telling my teen daughter to cook for herself if she hates my cooking. I'm a 40-year-old mom, and my daughter Erin is 16. I've been raising her pretty much on my own since her dad, Mike, and I split up when she was 10. He moved to another city for work after the divorce, so I've been the primary parent. Erin would see him a few times a year or fly to visit him, but I was the one handling all the day-to-day -day stuff, including cooking. For the most part, things have been fine. I'm no master chef, but I've always tried to make decent meals, nutritious stuff, some cheat days here and there, and I even mix up different cuisines to keep it interesting. It's not gourmet, but hey, it's food. A few months ago, Mike moved back to our city with his new wife, Kim. She's younger, 32, and Aaron was excited to have her dad closer again. We worked out a schedule where Aaron stays with them on weekends and holidays if they don't have other plans. I've met Kim a few times, and she seems like a good person. I trusted that things would be fine. But here's where things start going sideways. Aaron comes back from their place, raving about how amazing Kim's cooking is. Like, every time. She talks about all these fancy Asian-inspired meals Kim makes, ramen, pad thai, grilled meats, kimchi. I get it, I went through a phase with certain cuisines when I was younger too. So I figured, okay, let's try making some of those dishes at home. I'm not too shabby in the kitchen, so I whipped up some ramen, tried my hand at pad thai, and even did a grilled meat night. But every single time, Erin's like, meh, this isn't good, or straight up says she doesn't like it. I thought maybe she just missed her old favorites, so I went back to cooking the meal she used to love. Nope, still not good enough. It got to the point where she started refusing to eat anything I made. She'd either go stay with friends or head to Mike's for dinner. I was over it. So, the last time she came home, I told her she hates my cooking so much, she can start cooking for herself. I wasn't being sarcastic, Erin actually knows how to cook, and we live two minutes from a grocery store. She got mad, packed some clothes and stormed off to Mike's house. Now, Mike and my parents are all over me, saying I'm the bad guy for starving my daughter, which is ridiculous because she has food available. I'm not running a restaurant here. If she doesn't like what's for dinner, she can handle her own meals. I get that it's frustrating for her, but I'm just as frustrated. I'm putting in the effort to make meals and she's acting like everything I cook is inedible. I feel like I'm being reasonable here, but now the family's making me out to be the villain. The past few weeks have been hard and I think Erin has seen my post. So she came back home accompanied by her father and Kim. She has apologized for her actions and said there was nothing wrong with the food I made, it just she preferred Kim's cooking at the time, but after living with them for a bit she realized it was not that special. We sat down and Kim gave her perspective. As she runs a local restaurant when Aaron was staying over originally Kim would make restaurant quality dishes that she would serve to the clients and a lot of times they use more and stronger spices or different more expensive ingredients depending on the dish and sometimes MSG to enhance flavor of sauces. When Aaron moved in with them, and not just coming to see them over the weekend, Kim switched to making similar dishes but in more domestic style, so probably that's why Aaron didn't like mine and homemade Kim's meals as they had less spices or sauces. She also explained it to Aaron. Aaron seemed to be very excited, so I have asked her if anything happened. She said that Kim allowed her to learn some cooking at her restaurant when it is not too busy, and she asked if I'm okay with this. I was relieved and told her I would be happy for her to learn, but also warned her that she might get too stressed with all those after-school activities, and if she wants she can drop some that she doesn't enjoy. I have also suggested her to cook for us a dish she learned me, my BF my ex-husband, Kim and herself, maybe once a month to see how close it would be, to restaurant level. We have also agreed to have some cooking days where me and Kim share and exchange our secrets and techniques when cooking and Aaron is free to join in. AITA for not giving my sister half of my business? I started my small business back in July 2020, and it was all me from the beginning, my idea, my hustle, my everything. About eight months into it, my older sister, who had just had a baby and wasn't planning to go back to her job, reached out. She needed some extra cash and asked if there was anything she could do to help out. I figured, why not? So I hired her for some light administrative work, answering a few emails, organizing spreadsheets, and reaching out to potential clients, though let's be real, 
None of her leads ever went anywhere. She worked maybe five to eight hours a week, and I paid her a solid $25 and an hour for it. Meanwhile, I was still running the show, creating the actual products, handling client follow-ups, managing finances, running social media, and building up the website. Fast forward about a year, and we decided to do a rebrand. We got someone to design a fresh logo, and I revamped the website myself. It was a big deal for the business, and I was excited about the launch. About five months before the rebrand went live, my sister suddenly asked if we could get something in writing, like an employment contract, which was totally fair. But then she drops the bomb. She wants part ownership of the business. Now, I'm all for discussing stuff, so I told her I'd think about it. After some consideration, I came back with the idea of a 70-30 split, her getting 30%. She wasn't having it. She said she wanted 50-50 ownership. I straight up told her I wasn't comfortable with that. I mean, I built this thing from the ground up. I offered to go as high as 51-49, but she was mad about me still having final say. Again, I told her I'd think on it. A couple weeks before the rebrand launch, I was venting to my husband about the whole situation, and he was like, why don't you write down how much each of you has actually contributed to this business? So, I did. And honestly, it was eye-opening. Between the money I put in and the countless hours I've spent building this thing, it wasn't even close. I put together a spreadsheet showing a tiered buy-in structure, 10% for free, and she could buy her way up to 49% if she wanted. When I showed her the breakdown, she flipped. She said I blindsided her, betrayed her, and even claimed she built the business with me. I apologize for not bringing it up earlier, but she wasn't hearing it. Now, she's refusing to speak to me, skipped out on Thanksgiving, and is saying she's not coming to Christmas either. My family is super torn up over it, and I honestly don't know what to do. So AITA for not handing over half of the business I built? Or should I have handled this differently? Update, thanks for all the advice. I definitely let my judgment be clouded because she is my sister. I ended up taking the entire offer off the table and consequently she decided she didn't want to work for me anymore. Since then, I've hired two non-family member, part-time employees who are thriving and producing higher quality work than my sister ever did. I've grown the social media to over 100 followers which led to so many more clients and overall I just feel more excited about the business. I love my new team and we all work together so well. I think she was sucking the energy out of me and I didn't even realize it. Unfortunately, she refuses to speak to me and it causes awkward family gatherings. However, everyone in my family is on my side. Even her husband. He doesn't ask about the business but will talk to me about everything else in my life. I still feel bad about the way things ended, and I wish I would have been more upfront. But, I'm so glad I didn't give up my share of the business. I would have been absolutely miserable, and the business would have failed completely. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day, feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share, I'd love to hear from you.